Toronto International Film Festival. I know Keegan and Anthony went to go see uh, Marriage, Marriage Story. Story. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know why. I'm literally looking right at it, and you at the same time not able to like get that word out of my mouth. Um, which I think you guys liked it a lot. Loved it. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. So we did. We went to a screening of it last weekend. And, you know, I wanted to go from the time I saw the trailer. I was like, yes, I, I, this is a movie that I want to see. It's like a Netflix original, but it's also being released in theaters. They're doing a bunch of those this year. Mm-hmm. You can tell they're really like pushing for that um, awards. award season stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I knew I wanted to see it. But we had gone out the night before and I was like not feeling it. Waiting in line outside in Hollywood. You know, yeah. ugh, I was like, Bleh. But it was so well worth it. It was so good. It's Adam Driver and um, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson and Ray Liotta and Laura Dern. It was just wonderful. And Merritt Weaver. Is her name Merritt oh, Weaver? Yeah, I love her. Yeah, she's fantastic in everything I ever see her in. And she is in this for a little while as well. It was so... <sighs> It just gave you that feeling of like everybody has felt these things. Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson were so flawless in Mm. their performances. And you know me, I'm not like the biggest Scarlett Johansson fan of all time, but Mm -hmm. she was so good at being expressive and as was he. And it really like everyone has been through that feeling of a terrible breakup and like what that does to you. And this story really did kind of go between both of their um viewpoint experiences Mm -hmm. and so you had times when you really really felt for him but then you also really really felt for her and it was difficult to like choose a side like whose side you were on you know it's good that they did it that way that's Mm -hmm. real life yeah yeah Yeah. in in many cases there isn't a uh uh, one side it's not usually one-sided so it's it's nice that they 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 really explore yeah because it's a it's a love story told through the lens of divorce. So it was cool mm-hmm. to, after the screening, Adam Driver came out and Laura Dern and Ray Liotta and one of the other actresses came out to talk. And um, it was nice to hear them talk about it like that. It's a love story told through the story of their divorce. Mm. Uh, and so it's horrible in a lot of ways. It's really like raw emotionally. Like they have this huge blow up fight scene in it that like, If you have ever gone through that kind of thing with a partner when your relationship is falling apart, where you're like screaming at each other, I have, I've had that fight, you know what I mean? And so it's, it's hard to watch, but they're so, they're so good. I will be surprised if, um, at least Adam Driver isn't nominated for something for this. Yeah. I, I, uh. I hesitate on watching it during mm. this time of year. I just don't think I'm in the right headspace for it just yet. I, I do want to see it at some point because I do feel like it, it is something that, that a lot of people go through, you know, obviously like breakups and stuff, but it's really difficult, I think, to describe uh, how singular divorce is. And and it feels – I'm not that type of person that's like you can't understand unless you've gone through it. Um, but it is kind of something that you really can't understand what a complicated mix of emotions. I, I used to kind of roll my eyes hmm. when I would hear people say that. Cause I'm like, yeah, we've all gone through a breakup or what have you, sure. but it's, it's, and talking with my therapist and that sort of thing, it is something that is just a, a really, really weird mix of emotions. So I do want to really see a movie like that, that explores mm-hmm. how, how weird it is i I mean and this also has the compounding um difficult issue of what it's like to have a child in that situation sure and um you know i not to spoil too much of it but like he wants to live in new york she wants to live in la and kind of trying to figure out what you're doing and and Mm. having not only a divorce but like a contentious divorce and it's also told through the viewpoint of the lawyers like Laura Dern is a lawyer and Ray Liotta is a lawyer and having to get these like pit bulls of they described it really well where they were talking about um 
whenever you see like murderers on trial, you're seeing bad people at their best. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when you you see people who are getting divorced, you're seeing good people at their worst oh, because they're just wow. like going at each other wow. because that's what you have to do to try and like yeah. win, quote unquote, yeah. you know. And Laura Dern is fucking flawless, flawless I'm not surprised. She's in amazing. that movie. She has a speech in that movie about how why women in particular have to be so ruthless and they have to be so perfect at the same time um, when they're being like scrutinized that got a like the entire audience actually applauded wow. after after it because it was so so good wow. um so i mean yeah i can't sing its praises enough and i understand that maybe it'll be different when it comes out on netflix and people are watching it at home but um sometimes that makes it more intimate you mm-hmm. know what i mean like yeah. i've i've found there are things that i've rewatched on netflix that i've seen in the theater that it's a different experience you know sure. it's an experience to go and see a movie in a theater and it's something when it's like in your home which is the reason why i don't watch horror movies in my house right i'm like you <laughs> bringing that shit in keep the devil out of um, this house <laughs> damn right I, I will say i don't usually cry in the theater i cried oh, in, wow. uh, in this in this movie because it was so emotionally raw it was just i think like, that's why i have to avoid it i there's nothing more that i hate than a scary movie and being scared than crying Especially well, in the theater. but you know what? Something that this movie does really well. I mean, I still cried. It's still like it's hard to watch. Yeah. But um, they also there's so much levity as well. Like mm-hmm. so, it was it's Noah Bumgarner who also did I think the Squid and the Whale, and he he's written a bunch of mm-hmm. of things. So he's he's really masterful at like weaving these kinds of stories together. And so like there are scenes that are almost like farcical funny where there's like closing doors and they're like running around Merritt Weaver is hilarious there's this kind of like so there's a lot of of other stuff there to lighten <laughs> how heavy it can like yeah. get um mm. but but yeah I I realized that I just gave them like a, a whole fucking like 10 minute long <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> ad but I think it's it's getting people talking and I think that's what this article or this uh, Twitter thread was kind of about which is like, like I said, Ten- Toronto International Film Festival asks, what are your f- favorite on-screen re- relationships? And the other is, oh. what is your most memorable breakups on screen? Dude, you brought up, because we just got done recording a guest spot on Boobies and Newbies. So fun. I So oh. fun. I love Kelly so Me much. Me too. Go check out her podcast, seriously. Yes. Best. So we're going to be day one of the 12 days of Boobs Miss, which is so cute. Um, but you brought up while you were sleeping. And I was like, Holy shit. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Yeah. And Sandy Bullock and Dude Face. I, I have to ask, is it too late to change our Crazy in Love movie? Because oh. I honestly feel like While You Were Sleeping is such a good it Christmas Crazy in Love so movie. so great. And it's I haven't seen perfect. that movie in forever. That movie is, like, I love that movie so I much. I have watched I for- it in forever. I, I forgot how it. much yes. I love it. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is one of my favorite (laughs) on-screen romances is her and the blonde dude. Who is Bill Pullman? Bill Pullman. (gasps) Yes. Bill Pullman in that is so great. Oh, that, yes, their relationship is so fucking cute. Sandy Bullock is able to pull off something as a romantic lead that I feel like she just has that magic quality. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she's so, like, real. She's so, like, down down to earth. She has a down-to-earthness about her, like a silliness. You could be my friend. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. she's she's not like one of those like ingenues or too like precious about it. Like she just feels solid. And so yeah, I I loved a bunch of her rom coms. Absolutely. Back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are great. Um I guess on screen are they are they being specific as far as movie or, or T V TV as well? Oh, we've I had think some you good can, ones. I think you can pull in TV. Because my mine of course of all time is gonna be Anna Green Gables and Oh yes. You know who I actually love is Leslie and Ben from Parks and Rec. Yes. I think oh actually if Uh-oh. we're going T V we have to go David and Patrick. Oh, from, from Shit Creek. Creek. They're the fucking cutest of all time. Oh. They're so cute. I love that relationship. Yes. Is precious. I'm I love I love Jim and Pam too. I also do. I do love Jim and Pam. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sticking with mine. Anne and Gilbert. Like I, honestly. I wish I, I could think about it because so that's much. that's part of what makes those movies or whatever yeah. so great. You know, I was never one for the the Meg Ryan. Yeah, same. Rom-coms. Like, same. I, I, I like Meg Ryan with 
Tom Hanks. Yeah. yeah, I but I just they never grabbed me the way and maybe maybe it was an age thing, but oh, yeah. I totally thought of one and you're probably not going to agree with me and that's okay. Okay. Cuz I know how you guys feel. Um but as far as movie, I really loved the movie Far and Away. I've actually never seen that. And me either. Oh my god, you're kidding. It's Who's so in it? Great. It's Tom Nicole Cruise Kidman and, and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Young, right. young, young. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally she's, is she still young. rocking her curls? Hell yeah, yeah, she is. Totally. She's got beautiful hair, man. She does. Yeah. I I I don't know. I really love that movie when I was kid. Oh, oh my god. We we talked about this a bazillion times, the Cinderella story. Um Ever oh, After. Ever After. 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 I don't even know bride. that actor's name. Like what? Like what happened to him? Barrymore? No, 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 the actor. Oh, oh the actor. In Ever After, the oh, prince. Shit, I have what no is idea. his name? He like never remember. did anything again. <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah, you. he's like, um, okay. I'm done. I, I've hit my peak, clearly. <laughs> I, I'm going to call it a day. No, I'm going to hang my hat up. I definitely up. have to look. Oh, and then, of course, we've got like, you know, the, oh, the whole Jane Scott. Eyre and, and all that stuff that is based off book. If we're going with like, fictional, yeah, um, couplings, although that's not a very healthy couple. Uh, yeah. None of those books none are those. Uh, yeah. very healthy. <laughs> but, you know, I actually really love um, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant <gasps> in oh, Notting Hill. Notting yes. Hill. Yeah. They're, they're just like, he's so fumbly, flopsy cute that I'm like, oh, well, yeah. I love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a ton of good ones. And yeah, yeah getting into the Christmas season, uh, Love Actually. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love the porn couple in Love Actually or the stand-in yes. couple in yes. Love Actually. Hilarious. He is. Who is that? That's Morgan. A, um, uh, or Martin. Uh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Yes. yes. Martin Freeman. I wish it was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Can you re- like, let, we're going to actually, someone go in and do one of those deep <laughs> fake videos where you swap out. Swap Martin out the face. Freeman from Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> but what about, okay, so if we're talking um, on screen breakups. Mm. On screen breakups. I Ooh. will say, yeah, the breakup scene in Marriage Story, or not breakup scene, I guess it's just a fight scene. I it's think, not a breakup. Speaking of Christmas, I just wanted to go Family Stone because that is so fucking <gasps> That awkward. fucking movie is but so awkward, but it's so good. I have a it's hard time good. watching that movie, really? actually, because With how it's so uncomfortable they are to her. And they're so shitty. mean yeah. to her and then there's a brother sister swap at the end that i'm just i i it makes <laughs> sense but also but also if you fucked my sister i don't want to fuck you like i just <laughs> i don't want to do that i'm just like i don't want to i, know. Get with I you. know i know you really have to suspend disbelief just because what's his face is so freaking charming dermot Moroni or no. Luke Wilson? Luke Wilson. Yes. Oh yeah. I'm a Luke Wilson kind of girl. Yeah. Uh that's that's who I would go with is in that Is it Dermot Moroni or is it Yeah, he's Dylan cute. McDermott. It's, it's not Dylan it's not McDermott. Dermot. I it's, think it's, it's Dermot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like that SNL sketch where they're like they just like, which, yeah, one like what, which one is it? Um but yeah, that that movie is one that like you know how I feel about cringe and like sitting oh, in uncomfortable situations 100 percent. typically am 100 percent with you yeah and i yeah. am exactly the same and they are terrible to her like yeah. unnecessarily i'm like you're, if your family's that mean then i'm not taking anyone home ever oh, yeah because like absolutely they're awful people <laughs> and they do end up kind of like writing it off like well it's because she wasn't right for him i'm like that's uh, not, that's no that's reason to be an nice. absolute piece of trash <laughs> to the person who gets brought like you at least need to be hospitable yeah. Yeah, like, yeah we're too, we're too how midwestern. Works. To clearly, be like, right. like, yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I can't do that. No, oh <laughs> god, it's though? like a, a, my, everything in my nature is opposed to that. I do love that movie though. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> it's a classic. A lot of people really. I I think it's, and I don't want to say it's polarizing because it's not like I hate it. Right, but I do think it's um one of those that you either like love it or you don't. You know, like, and, but lots right. of people love that movie. It's one of my holiday go tos. I put it, I put it on around this time of year. Yeah. You know what cheesy ass holiday movie I watch that I look, I know, I know is not a good movie is The Holiday mm. with Cameron Diaz and yeah. Jude yes. Law and Kate Winslet and Jack Black, in which Who? Kate Winslet and Jack Black end up together. Besides, <laughs> thank you. Like Jack Black is a romantic. But I kind of love it, though. I loved it. I thought that he was like... Can you imagine if you're Kate Winslet and you're like, oh, okay, like I get to be in a holiday rom-com and she sees the casting. She's like, ooh, Jude Law's get... Okay, so Cameron Diaz got Jude Law. Okay. And then she's like, wait... (laughs) 
but that's kind of the point of it and i kind of like i don't know i i kind of would love to see more quote unquote imperfect people in these kinds of it's it's not even like the way that he looks i don't know there's certain like actors like jack black and tom green yep two actors so i'm just like i they just annoy me whoa totally totally uh, i agree i i am gonna stand alone here but i would never put tom green and jack black on the same plane like i think <gasps> tom green is v annoying yeah, i think yeah. he's, he's incredibly the, the annoying yes i have actually. no have idea not nacho libre i have no i well but all of those movies that were coming out at that time were like mick gruber all of those like silly mick slapstick <laughs> You know, like all of that shit was okay, happening. But MacGruber was not like trying to, you know, racially or like yeah, infringe but upon. W- welcome to 2004. Like that's true. what life was like back then. That's it's true. awful. Yeah. But Tropic Thunder couldn't happen now either. Oh, girl. <laughs> like, girl. Like, the amount of offensive things. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> learned real quick as a society. Like, I just, Oof. for for your angry neighborhood fem- feminist, we just put How I Met Your Mother under the microscope. And Oof. let me tell you, like, it's that just- shit. And that was like less than a decade ago. Right. And it's like, we could not do that now. Yeah, Barney, <laughs> just, Barney was legit a fucking predator. He was a predator. He I openly admits at one point in that show to selling a woman for a car. Yeah. He's a bad person. And then Ted is just the also worst. a bad person. He's I nice guy. I don't want to put this under TM. my microscope. Yeah. He's yeah. nice guy. I don't want to rewatch it. I don't want to put no, it under my don't. microscope. Sh- I want to leave it where it was in the back of my brain of that place when it absolutely happened and walk away from it and that's <laughs> totally fine like that's the thing about problematic faves it's okay like even my first watch of the office right now yeah. i'm just like there is shit that's happening right now that i feel so uncomfortable with and it's crazy it was only a few years ago i know and i realize also with that show there's like kind of this like it's a satirical element where like you know it's bad like it's, yeah it's yeah, supposed yeah. to He's be bad supposed to be like behaving badly yeah yeah, yeah. but um Anyway, my point of this is to say, <laughs> Tom Green, I don't even know how that man got famous. I think Ugh. he's incredibly annoying. I don't think he's funny. Um, if, you feel differently, if you feel oh. differently, um, listeners, please Christ. let me know why you like Tom Green. I will never understand why Drew Barrymore married him. It That's makes insane. no sense to me. I I, I mean, I like to laugh as much as the next person, but it's not it's that. Not, it's not that. It's not that. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. No. Why? Why he was in Charlie's Angels? I don't know. Like, what? Yes. Oh, I blocked that from my memory for sure. And they end up together. I think. Oh, that's like right. Drew, Drew Barrymore yep. and Tom Green like end up together in that movie, and that's how they met. So gag. Uh, well, oh, I hate it. Why? <laughs> I hate it. Oh yeah. So you we just shit feel- all over Tom Green. Oh my God! Savage X Fenty oh. show. Oh. Bye bye, Victoria's Secret. Bye. Calm down. Yeah, bye. calm down. <laughs> yeah, so I believe Victoria's Secret is filing for bankruptcy. Is that right? Oh, I did see something, something about like that. that. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Or they That's might not be filing for, for bankruptcy, but they are they're, failing they're, as a business. They're restructuring. I'm not, dis- I'm not disappointed. <laughs> they're not doing the their Victoria's Secret fashion show which I am anymore, not sad about at all. all. I, Goodbye. At all. I, I don't, don't want that. that business to fail because only and Christina you as well know this. There's so many people in our hometown that rely on that business to oh, do well. Yeah, so, I it's see. It's a Columbus-based company, and yeah, we oh, know people. It's unfortunate. I didn't know that. Can I? I haven't bought anything from Vicky Secret since I was like 18. Maybe Same. that was when it was like the height of like oh fancy bra. You sure. know what I mean for me, and now I'm like. These things, I, I just haven't yeah. liked them since I was like, I can 18. tell you, I know for a fact, the last time I bought something from Victoria's Secrets was about probably about six or seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And I bought two bras because I needed some new bras. Yeah. And um, I, uncomfortable as hell. Yeah, they're uncomfortable terrible. Uncomfortable as hell. And I ended up, honestly, I think I've worn them a handful of times and initially just finally got rid of them because they're not comfortable. Yeah. They're, they're definitely... Um, fashion over function i would say like uh, there like there are some in there like if you're going because you just want to put on something pretty and sparkly that is going to be taken off fairly quickly right i I think you can find things there for that um if you're looking for a good everyday bra i don't that's not where i would go and honestly listen 
I'm a millennial. I graduated high school the year that the stock market or the housing crisis happened in You're 2008. Not sixty dollars for yeah. a bra. I don't have the fucking. M- I'm going to go to Target. Okay, <laughs> Amen, like, top. I'm up top. absolutely not going in and spending sixty dollars for one bra. <laughs> I'll yeah. say I think that this that what you're talking about a money i think this is where the bralette came in bralettes Hell were yeah. like a thing forever and you know why because they were inexpensive to make they mm-hmm. were cute mm-hmm. you could do the thing and it was just they comfy they comfy yep. mm-hmm. the bralette was like a thing and they're like what 12 bucks and yeah. you know who Sign makes bralettes for large busted women rihanna does oh. yeah she does because yes. rihanna makes something for everybody yes and it's not coming across in a pandery way like nope. absolutely it's, it's not. just how she's made her makeup how she's made her music how she's making her brand is just so inclusive mm-hmm. and i'm i'm such a fan rihanna is the ultimate i do what i want i love it like uh, i, I do what i want like fucking idol i she feel is- like gorgeous yes and she does what she fucking wants and i feel like when she walked in to make fenty when she had the idea to make the cosmetics line i really do feel like she walked in and was like this is what i want to do we're coming out the gate with 45 fucking shades yep, yep. um th- this is what i want make it happen like mm-hmm. i i don't feel like she went in listening to everyone tell her well this is how it's done and you have mm-hmm. to do it this way like she's just like i'm i'm doing it the way well, i want and to her credit if everybody else is doing it this way, why start a new brand at all? Yeah. Why exactly. start a new brand at all? And why put your name on anything if you can't make it different, if you totally. can't make it special and you totally. can't make it inclusive? And what she's done like now it is, I mean, I, I, I understand like Makeup Forever was like, what the fuck? Because they've had a lot of shades for a long time. But with the way that Rihanna did it, it is now... Yeah, people are calling out brands if they do not have a bunch of shades when they come out. It's now standard for yeah. brands to come out with like 40 fucking shades whenever they release a new co- like complexion product. Yeah. And like that's, you know, as someone who my if you look at pictures of me in like middle school and <laughs> I even went us. at, at but it's different. It's different pre- for people who have brown skin. Like it is different because mm-hmm. growing up it. Uh, there were a million shades of various undertones of white. Mm. Um, and there wasn't a lot. You got up into caramel and you're like, you can be caramel, toffee, mocha, or like ebony. espresso. And yeah. ebony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that was like what you had. Yeah. Four choices. And it's it, always like pink. And it didn't matter what your undertone was. It's I will orange. show you. I will show you. The first time I was allowed to wear makeup was my 13th birthday. Oh my, my mom God. took me to the Estee Lauder makeup counter because that's where she bought her makeup. Oh. I felt so beautiful. But looking now, and we bought the foundation, we bought all the stuff. My makeup was... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it, uh, I have the, to see this. The picture. flashback. I, have to. I think I have it at home, actually. That's amazing. Oh. Um, my, I think I have some on my phone, too. It was so white that she put me in. It was so pale because she didn't know what to do. And there honestly weren't that many options for people of darker skin tones. So what what Rihanna is doing is so awesome. And I love seeing it. And I love the fashion show where she had people of all sizes. I love it. Of all abilities. Yep. Uh, It was just great. Yeah, it's that's what future. we can see more of. It's the future. The future is now. The future Yay. is now. Yeah. yeah. The thing that you're saying, though, about is makeup forever. I think that, you know, like them kind of coming out and be like, wait, but we've been here. I think the problem with that is, is that not a lot of people were familiar with makeup forever. Makeup forever was really more of a brand that was meant for makeup artists. Until very and recently. And they catered yeah. toward mm-hmm. makeup mm-hmm. artists. So, yeah, you can't be that upset when you really went the direction of going like we're going to speak to the artist. We're going to speak to this group and then when the rest of the group didn't know you're like that's who you were gearing yourself towards yeah yeah exactly i mean and of course he was about everyone yeah and of course the beauty industry has come a long way since you know sure since makeup forever started and now everyone wants to do everything and they want to get all the high-end stuff and you know you can get it all in sephora Mm -hmm. and like i i get that but i mean still i think it was just the way that just something about the way that Fenty came out that everyone lost their 
fucking minds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. rightly so. Like it was well, great. Her, her website is great too. I signed mm-hmm. up and, and everything like that. And the way that they, you know, kind of tailor like the products to you that like you fill out a bunch of questions, what your body type is, like what are things that you like? Are you like a sexy person? Are you more subdued? Are you fiery? Like, I love so, that. And then they're like recommending, they're like, try this, try that. And I, it's just really smart. I think she's a she really smart like experim- business woman. Experiential. Yeah. Exper- experiential. <laughs> sure yeah i mean we know what you're saying experience it's, it's an experience yeah. yeah it's an experience yeah i love it i love it so i i'm okay with saying goodbye to the victoria's secret fashion show and hello Same. savage x fenty yeah here for it yeah here well this episode comes out the day before thanksgiving yeah so for fuck mary kill should we theme it? Yes. yes. So so to follow up with last year's theme uh-huh. where we fucked Mary killed our favorite Thanksgiving foods, foods. I thought, what if we just do pies this time? Oh, like desserts. Just Okay. Well, yeah. well specifically pies. Pie. You know, I mean like whatever. I like pies. You can do whatever. Thanks, but Thanksgiving's about pie. Yeah. It's usually it's a pie centered. Yeah. It's not uh, like Christmas, event. which is malty. Yeah. This is yeah, yeah. the specific. So uh, growing up, I was always an apple pie fanatic, but r- in recent years, because Anthony loves it so much, I've been making pecan pies and that's what I've been taking with me to mm-hmm. our group mm-hmm. friends giving. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think I'm going to pick a, pick up a con pie. I'm going to say that friends giving is maybe one of my favorite times. Oh, of the it's, year. Best. Oh, it's, it's best. I love it. It is. I've never felt so like grateful. grossly grossly grateful yeah like beyond yeah. it's it's really the most incredible i want everybody to join it's us. one of I my wish. favorite days it of really the year. is it, it is and this year we have a new attendee i cannot wait to smell oh that baby my god head. so I'm our friend baby head on monday I can't wait. our friend <gasps> vanessa hi vanessa uh and and joe just had a little baby and oh. i oscar and i met him <laughs> baby's name oscar. oh my god he's so tiny and he knows our voice because he's been listening and to us. that's exactly right i was like he's so comfortable and chill and quiet and i was like i wonder if it's because i'm sitting here holding him i held him like pretty much the whole time i was there and unless he was eating and i was like he is so chill he's just sleeping the whole time he's not fussy at all and i was like i wonder if it's because he knows us already yeah. you know he's listened <laughs> She's listened to the podcast throughout her entire pregnancy, so we he's heard it. our voices uh, the the whole time. So I love it. Um, it's so precious, precious. I Ugh. I love Friendsgiving. I'm so excited. All right, so you pick pecan. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to decide. Are you guys us. pecan or pecan? I pecan. just said pecan, so I'm assuming I'm pecan. Pecan. Yeah. 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 Is okay. that like a tomato? I don't want to overthink it. Yeah. Some thing? some people say pecan. Yes. I definitely don't. <laughs> those are probably people who say tomato and like those tomato. people are just wrong. <laughs> oh, this is not tomato. <laughs> um, I, okay. So like you, when I was younger, I had a specific pie that was my go-to and that used to be the pumpkin pie. Mm-hmm. But as I've aged and I'm older and wiser, I'm now apple pie, which is funny because it's a little different from you. Yeah. I, I mean, love a, like a good Dutch apple pie. Or I'll like still take cent- an apple oh, pie any day. I love yeah, apple pie. Okay. Me too. That's mine. I mean, I feel like I gotta, I gotta stand the pumpkin pie because okay. it's the classic. It, that is, is the, the holiday classic. I will say, my mom makes this peanut butter pie. Oh shit! Mm. That's more around Christmas though. Okay. But yeah, it's got it's got that like um, Oreo cookie crust and oh, then this damn. like peanut butter whip topping mm. confection and then ganache and Delicious. oh my god. Yeah. god, you know what I made one year Stop. for Thanksgiving that was actually really good was I made a um, butter pecan cheesecake Ooh. with a shortbread crust. Stop oh. it! Mwah. It was so good. Oh, okay, okay, but we're gonna go. We should never do this hungry. Honestly, I'm like hungry. Um, so we're gonna go pecan, apple, pumpkin. Yep. Okay. Okay. I know what I'm gonna do. Okay. You know, you marry a pumpkin pie. Okay. It's solid. It's gonna be there for you. Everyone likes it. Like you're bringing it to the friend group, and everyone's like, "Pumpkins here. Oh, pumpkins, great. Pumpkin, like pumpkin." We like pumpkin. I, I don't have anything you know, bad to say. Pumpkin never really is rude. Pumpkin is not rude. It's not loud or it's in dependable. Your face. It's dependable. dependable. Mm-hmm. Now you fuck pecan pie. Mm. You fuck it. You fuck it good. <laughs> wow. It, it's like it's like it's thick. It's 
thick it's and sultry. sultry. Yeah. It's sultry. Mm, mm, it is mm. the freaking R and B of the pie. Okay. It, absolutely. <laughs> okay. That is the perfect way to put it. Like <laughs> it is the Isley you, Brothers of Pie. <laughs> it's talking to you like Barry fucking white. It's like, <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. And then I I'm sorry, I cannot kill Apple though. I know. I cannot kill it. This Are you gonna bring rule. friend back? I'm gonna bring a <laughs> friend back. Oh, because now. Apple Apple Pie Next time is Keegan? the one that you hold hands with. Apple Pie will like hold you when you cry. That's right. And it's like he's your friend. He's, he brought ice cream. He's your friend. <laughs> he brought <laughs> ice cream. He, he is did. Your he goes. He goes like um. You know, leave diving with you. He's, oh, yeah. he's a fall activity guy. He is. He is he's your ducky. fall friend. He's mm-hmm. the ducky of the pies. Aww. Well, I know you just said all those wonderful things mm-hmm. yeah. about pumpkin pie. Mm. Oh, no. That's okay. I am the weirdo who doesn't really like pumpkin pie. <gasps> Oh no! So you secretly don't like my husband? I wow. yeah, I like I I You're like it's fine. I, I meet mean, up cool. with Cassie like on without you, and I'm just like, well, how do you really feel about pumpkin? Do you? <laughs> I mean, so I I mean, I guess just the okay, two, but between the two of us, of our group, of us. Is probably the serial killer. <laughs> oh right? no! Like if we had to- <laughs> oh no! Um, no, no. I mean, I I understand the appeal of pumpkin pie. I love other pumpkin things. Like I I'll make a pumpkin bread, a mm. pumpkin bar. Mm. With some like cream cheese frosting. Oh yeah, okay. I, Stop I will nice. do all of that. <laughs> but I think it's something about the texture of pumpkin pie mm-hmm. that I've. You're not, not a flan fan either. No, Ooh. I don't like flan. I don't like flan. Um, Ooh. there's something about that texture that like Crimble jiggly leg. texture. Ooh. Um, which is funny because I do like pecan pie, but that there's something about that that I I don't love. So, um, I'm so sorry. Are we friending or are we killing? We're friending. She, we, okay. she changed the rules back and we're going to remember this for the future, Christine. Yeah, whenever you don't let me uh-huh. friend Keith Morrison, I'm going to okay. be like, what the fuck? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I think for people it still stands. I'm like, oh, food, oh, food. Why did you get oh, to make food. the rules? Wow, food, food though, that's a whole nother level. I'm, I can't I'm, throw out food. I'm too Midwesterner to kill I'm, food. I'm holding this. No waste. Waste I'm not holding one. It for the perfect time. A little bit bitter. <laughs> Cassie difficult. has her arms I am. crossed. <laughs> she is unhappy. I am offended. Um, but okay, so fine, whatever, fine. I will go ahead and friend pumpkin pie. It doesn't sound like you want to be friends with him. Wow. I, I, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to be. Yeah, I'm I'm really indifferent. I'm ambivalent Ooh. towards pumpkin. That's worse than worse. Hate. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's worse. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind <laughs> of. Your boyfriend is middle class fancy. I want to. I want to fuck your husband's hot brother pumpkin bar oh okay yes i want to fuck his I brother pumpkin bread <laughs> yeah or same yeah <laughs> um, a real hot family a real yeah. hot family and you know he's fine he's nice he's dependable yeah yeah just doesn't have that fire right <laughs> so um he ain't spicy <laughs> i'll just put pumpkin in the corner and um i again i'm with you i am gonna fuck a pecan pie because mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't have too much of it. It's like the kind of pie. It's like you need one good hefty slice of it. And then that's all you that's your calorie intake for the entire day. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, because mm-hmm. I have made it now several times. And I'm like, that is it's all sugar. It's it is. sugar and corn sugar syrup. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. Sugar, sugar nuts. Yeah. Sugar nuts. It's absolutely sugar. That's what nuts. I call them too. Hey, sugar nuts. Oh yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what he's in as you're in your phone as sugar, sugar nuts. nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With a picture of a pecan pie. Like, uh, oh God, I, I love need it. to date somebody. So just so I could call them sugar nuts now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to fuck up a pecan pie. And then for me, Apple, I think Apple is my pumpkin. Like oh, yeah. I, Apple for me was the old standby. If I I could have apple pie anytime and it was comfortable, it was comforting to me. And that's who you want to go home to. Can I ask, yeah. are you regular apple pie or Dutch? Dutch. I'm both. Sprickens the Dutch. To be honest, uh, I, to be honest, I'm both. Cr- I, I love I, that crumble on top. I love oh, a good damn crumble. I love a good <laughs> flaky crust too, though. So I mean, I, I honestly, I'll go either way. Uh, I go yeah. both ways with the that's um, what, uh, apple. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, she's yeah. really the unicorn of apple pies. <laughs> I, I, I really, I love apple pie any way you want to give it to me. Uh, any way. You want to give it to me? I'll take it. And Damn. yeah, that's that's, that's hot. Who, that's okay. who you want to, you know, fucking ride or die with. There well, you go. So I'm going to marry an apple. I'm going to keep it spicy as well because mine 
it was different from both of yours. Oh, shit. Here we go. Shit. I love right. it when we're all different. Okay. So I'm going to start with my good friend, Pecan Pie. <laughs> well, friend, but I got to be honest with you. You know how I feel about sweet boys, and it's just too it sweet, sweet for me. Mm-hmm. I don't need that soft ass sweet shit in the bedroom. He, I like, I not so much. He's going to run you a bath. You need a little I spicier. I don't want a yeah. bath run for me. <laughs> of the three of them, it is the least spicy. It doesn't yeah. have cinnamon in it. Nope. It's a sweet, sugary bay. It's just sweet yeah. nuts. Mm-hmm. And I do have him in my phone as sweet nuts. And I, he is the person I'll call if I break up with like a boyfriend or like oh, I've had yeah. a bad day at work. Mm-hmm. You know, good old sweet nuts is going to be there for me. Yeah. <laughs> Pat yes. me on the back, bring me a glass of wine. Too sweet for me to fuck or marry. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. It's so, that, that I love your logic. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a different view of pumpkin pie than Christina and Keegan. Okay. You're going to fuck a pumpkin pie. I am going to fuck a pumpkin pie. <laughs> now here's why. Okay. Because pumpkin pie is una fucking suming. He looks middle class fancy on the outside, but once you dig in, he's got a big fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> he got that big, spicy dick energy. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. wait, I thought I was, I, I just thought you were going to be, because you just look. You look like and pumpkin pie. And then you, but you know I what? That whip, you put whipped cream on top and I was like, God damn. Yep. You know what pumpkin pie is? Pumpkin pie is that house on Zillow that you're scrolling and yep. everything looks fucking normal. And then mm, you boom, like is. sex dungeon. And you're <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. 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 Yes. Wow. Woo. Wee, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's going to be me and Spice Pumpkin Man. Got it. And uh, <laughs> I am going to marry apple pie. And uh, here's why. Apple pie agreed. He's, he's homey. He feels comfortable. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a hug. Mm-hmm. Um, he could be your friend. He could be a good lover. He's an all around there. For he's going to listen to your problems. He is. I feel that he's got, but he's also just like pumpkin got a surprising amount of spice inside. Yes. Like, and it's not just sugar. You sweet. got fucking nutmeg in there. He's There's gonna an all spice. He's not going to lie to you about things. He's going to tell it to you straight. He's going to give it to you straight. And it, there may I be a little this. edge to it, but he's going to come in strong. Ma- but he's made of fruit. He's going to, he's, he's going to, yeah. he's soft. good for you. He's soft and he's good for you. And he's, but he's going to tell you when you're being. That's right. Ridiculous. He's going to call you on the floor yeah. when need be. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. that spice in yes. there, he's going to call you on the floor if need be. I love that we all have different reasoning. It makes it, <laughs> makes me feel like if we were all single and we were all in the dating market going out. Oh, we're, we're not picking we're the same guys. We're not picking guys. the same no, guys. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We would be awesome wing women yeah. for each other. Oh, Three. yeah. And we're awesome wing women for the pie. So <laughs> yeah. I feel very Here grateful. That's, I love it when we do like not real people like oh, I know. when we do characters yeah. or like I'm, I'm waiting for presidents like, to come around oh again. yes i like making stories about how, how <laughs> In, they would be inanimate objects yes. and you know what it makes sense though i don't think anybody could argue with our logic i don't think so either. no <laughs> no come at I, us come at us <laughs> like, i dare you no i i want to know i i'll leave the worsties someone start a fred thread fmk Mm. thanksgiving pie there it is there yeah, you go also willing to take uh other pie su- suggestions yeah and it right. has to say pie we're not going we're not going any other yeah, yeah we're not branch, go, branching out into a crazy. cobbler okay yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're sticking you know there has to be a bottom crust yeah. yep. to it no soggy bottoms here yeah no soggy <laughs> bottoms <laughs> uh, all right guys you want to take five and we'll come back with stories yeah yes. and we're back all right Cass, you want to get started all with right. stories so okay uh, I don't want to give anything away with it, so I'm just going to go right into it. Nice. All right. I was working on a political campaign in Colorado. When most people think of Colorado, they think of Denver, but this was a small desert town near the Utah border. I feel like you may have been there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably driving through. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw this single dad on Tinder. I don't want kids, but I'm feeling spontaneous, and I'm like, fuck it. This guy is cute, and his kid is like five, so it's going to like use the bathroom by itself so i guess there you go. i can deal <laughs> i don't know guys five is a five's a great age. that's a mischievous age though it, yeah. i don't want to jump in as a step parent at that <laughs> I think that's you know? was when i met chris i think it's a great age oh really because they're still malleable to the idea of inviting new people into their lives oh, that's and a good if point something were to take root 
it's not like an 11 year old who's like fuck you you're not my mom that's yeah. also true. true okay you guys make good points yeah right? I mean, look over. at dylan and chris's relationship mm-hmm. i mean perfect example anyway so boop, boop, boo. um we went on our first date and had an amazing time we were at this uh at this like big spot in town for a bluegrass concert and i ended up meeting a lot of his high school friends his mom even walked in but it wasn't like awkward at all we were just enjoying ourselves he was a really fun and sweet country guy with good values he's seemed really mature and like he had his shit together total husband material <laughs> sounds like sugar nuts <laughs> oh really <laughs> total sugar nuts um that, if that's not the name of this episode <laughs> sugar nuts <laughs> i'm gonna be thinking that as i'm making the pecan yeah. pie for thanksgiving i'm just like stirring it sugar, sugar nuts, nuts. <laughs> So a few days later, I go to his house to watch a movie. It started badly. As soon as I got there, he had already downed three quarters a bottle of whiskey. Whoa. That is too much whiskey. It's a lot of whiskey. Oh, man. How much? Three quarters. Oh, God, no. It's like Uh -uh. somebody that has a great job interview and they show up the first day of work and they're just terrible yep. yeah I, you're like wow you were able to hold that in yep for the job interview yep and the end. mask the crazy and then you got the job and you uh, here down we are. To- <laughs> I'm, I'm just having trouble comprehending that much whiskey whiskey to be able to take that much whiskey that no you your body is acclimated I've, to it if you're yeah. able to get that much down that quickly i've had half bottle nights and they get a little oh, wild yeah. Yeah, Extra three wild. quarters of a bottle, no. and I'd be like, I'd be on the floor, blackout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be three a.m. White Castle, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> parking lot, absolutely, and that I can feel the headache, yeah, yeah. Already. already, yeah. Um, when I was a kid, my parents had gotten divorced, um, and when my parents would date, we would get close to their new partner, and it would, it, if it didn't work out, we were sad. So I told him in advance I didn't want to meet his kid unless we were official, and he's like. Oh, come say hi. And I'm like, really? I'm not comfortable doing that. He's like, oh, it's fine. He's asleep. Pause. Why would you go say hi to an asleep child? Pause in s- on so many respects right now. Yeah, I know. Unpack I-, it. I-, I assumed that the kid was not there yep. if he is inviting three- someone over well, he's and three drinking. three quarters of a bottle of whiskey down like Mm -hmm. what would you do in an emergency if you had a five-year-old and you had drank that much whiskey you can't drive him to the hospital that's for sure wow okie dokie well his this lady's coming over so yeah it's fine yeah it's fine i declined but and but decided to stick it out and stick around so i'm super uncomfortable and we're sitting on the couch then he's like come here i have to show you something for context, he owns an RV manufacturing company or some shit like that. He opens the door to his spare bedroom to show me a collection of mechanical parts assembled as homemade murder weapons. <gasps> there I, just, were, I just got chills. I, was, I have chills. I have goosebumps. I was going to make a joke about him being a murderer. Uh, I didn't expect it to go this way. Okie oh, my dokie. God. There oh were God. at least... 15 giant sharp objects on sticks in some fashion. <gasps> and again, you have a foot, five-year-old in the house. Yes. A six-foot flogger with 15 metal chains as thick as your forearms. A 75-pound club covered in spikes. <gasps> well, you're going to die. human pizza cutter. No. Literally a giant spiky wheel of blades on a giant stick, etc. Oh, cetera. my God. Uh, you, I, you're going to die. I How... How are you writing to us from the afterlife? Oh, I God. mean, so yeah, I ran out of there as fast as I could, and that was the worst date I've ever been on. Why the there fuck? was no third date, and we did not hook up. Why but would you d- show that to someone? I'm like Yuki, and how are you writing us from the afterlife? I, because that how is how did you escape this situation? Like, uh, I'm why? What kind of person <laughs> makes FBI, a human if you're pizza listening. cutter? I, oh my god for why i oh I, we're we're gonna be doing a crazy in love about yeah. that dude uh, uh, for real and again you have that is so unsafe it's <laughs> for it's a small child to layers. be around I, it's, all of this is bad okay anyway so much oh to god. unpack on that story yeah oh Ugh. yikes oh shivers i right. don't even want to accidentally run into him because it's yeah. like a small town well, like fuck dating like i don't 
I'm so nervous. Can you? Yeah, I'm going to relocate. I, you're nervous. I'm nervous. I go on first dates all the time. And now I have to know that there's somebody out there that makes human motherfucking pizza cutters. Uh, that is the most insane thing. And is before, so unaware yeah. that they are willing to show them to you immediately oh my upon God. arrival to their abode. No, thank you. Chills. <laughs> Chills. Oh, all right. Well, mine uh, was also sent uh, via email. She says, when I was a freshman in high school, a senior asked me out on a date. Oh, ooh, ooh. Uh, God, crazy. Man. I wasn't super into him, but he was nice to me and I was not the badass confident woman I am today. I need to describe him real quick. He had transition eyeglasses. Oh, <laughs> she puts no. in parentheses, kind of creepy. I'm I, with her. I cannot I with transition eyeglasses. I loathe <laughs> transition. What year is glasses. this? And uh, I'm sorry. Have you met anybody <laughs> under the age of like 40 who that has transition? I know. If you're in high school and you have transition lenses. What's happened? There's a story. Oh, Your keep, home life is complicated. Going. Listen to the rest of this description. He also had a high and tight military style haircut Mm-mm. and only wore army fatigues to school every day. Oh, no. I'm you so in danger, nervous. girl. Oh, yes. that is scary to me, actually. He wanted to pick the movie and the place we're going to eat, which I agreed to. We decide he would pick me up at my house. The day of the date came. Oh, 300. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and to my surprise, when he pulled up to my house, he was in the passenger seat of the car with his mom driving. Mm. I thought it was weird, but maybe she was just going to drop us off at the movie. And you're Isn't a freshman that the in only high school. reason you date a senior is because they have their own car? Right. Yeah. And you yeah. don't have to be around yeah. parents? That's, That's right. true. Really. Because I was going to say, if you're a freshman in high school, you, you're probably still used to parents driving you places. Right. So it might not be as like... But like, that's why you date seniors. And this is, uh, yeah. So she, uh, no, she was coming along with us. I, when we got inside, he sent his mom and I to the counter to get snacks while he got the movie tickets. I still wasn't sure what movie we we're going to see. I remember I wanted to see the ring too. Apparently it was the movie his mom wanted to see Miss Congeniality too. <laughs> Uh, hey, like, I mean, I mean oh. San- Sandy Bullock's a treasure. I'll see a Sandy I mean. Bullock joint any day. Yeah, <laughs> but sounds good to me actually. Yeah, I don't know where the problem is. When we got into the theater, she sat in between us. Oh my god! Not, okay, none of us talked the entire time because it was so awkward. This isn't a it date. Is, like, isn't a date. I don't know what this is, this but is so it's not awkward. a date. Like, if you're not even sitting next to the person, like what? What? Why? Why even ask yeah. anyone out? I have my stuff. Like you know how I get when I get nervous that I start to get gas because I swallow <laughs> air. I- <laughs> This is You're how just I feel farting right now. your way through Miss Congeniality <laughs> too. Like, just <laughs> making that, that movie theater seat real warm. <laughs> uh, after the movie, I really just wanted to go home, but they insisted that they take me out to eat for dinner. Mm-hmm. Again, his mom picked the place, and then she sat on my side of the booth. Applebee's. <laughs> 100. You are getting yep. some half-priced apps up yep. in this bitch immediately. <laughs> Eventually, they took me home, and his mom said she hopes to see me again. Weird. Whoa. And uh, he, <laughs> you went on a date her. with his mom. <laughs> yep. And he walked me to my front porch and tried to kiss me, but I swerved and gave him a hug instead. I tried to avoid him after that, but it's hard to do in a small town. Mm -hmm. After that weird three-way date with his mom, he told everyone I was his girlfriend, and I had to quash those rumors real quick. Thankfully, he graduated uh, a few months after that, and I never thought about him again. So... Fast forward oh, 13 damn it. years oh, later. I fucking love whenever they give an epilogue to yes. the, I know. this story. It's the best. I stopped by a locksmith one day to get keys made for work. And guess who's working behind the counter? Mm-hmm. You're going somewhere else to get your keys made now because mm-hmm. he will make a copy for himself. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-uh. Yep. And his mom. <laughs> yes, and his mom. Oh, God. He looked exactly the same down to the creepy glasses, so I immediately recognized him. So now he has a choice in eyewear, and he's still choosing. <laughs> Transition? <laughs> Transition lenses. <laughs> I stared at the floor, hoping he wouldn't recognize me, but he did. He was flirting with me while I had the keys Whoa. made, 
AKA trying to scream at me over the sound of the key cutter. Oh, I was so annoyed <laughs> because I had like a hundred copies to make and it took forever. Ugh. I had to get colored caps for the keys to make them easier to ID. And he insists on taking the time to put them on for me. No. I think he was just holding me hostage. Of course. I went to pay with my company card and he goes, here's a discount for you and takes 50% off the total. I mean, Hey, I'll take that though. As I'm signing the receipt, he decides that's his last shot and asks me out. So I joke with him and I say, would your mom come with us this time? <gasps> oh, bold, no. sick, bold move. Burn. Shit. <laughs> Girl, you are savage. Brave. Brave, and I actually. <laughs> love it. And she goes, and then I laugh and he laughs, but gets really red in the <gasps> face. So then I say, actually, I'm married. Um, so, uh, I was doing some dirty work that day. I didn't even have my ring on and he didn't even believe me. Whatever, dude. Thanks for the free keys. See you never. <laughs> oh my God. We stand wow. an icon. Honestly. I know. Um, would your mom come with us this time? Damn. Ooh, damn. Spicy. Spicy. <laughs> okay. So I have a holiday story for you guys. <gasps> yes. Hey, ladies. Uh, first off, y'all are amazing, and I love listening to your podcast. Aww. A friend of mine told me about it a couple months ago, and it's really made my bus commute to work more in, uh, much more enjoyable and incredibly awkward when I start giggling and have to bite the inside of my cheek to keep from making a scene. <laughs> yes. I love that. I love it. I was catching up on a small backlog of episodes and heard you mention wanting holiday stories, so I figured why not submit my own. It's my fall semester of my senior year of college, and I start dating this guy who lives a ways away. He was also a senior, although in high school. He was 18 when we started seeing each other, though. Not my proudest moment since I was 21. That's uh, not... It's not terrible. Not too bad. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm less like, ugh, 18, 21, and more like he's high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. High school, college is more... Um, anyways, I live on the other side of the country from my family and didn't go home for Thanksgiving because it didn't make sense financially since I usually went home for Christmas. So, I mean, we all feel that it's yeah. like, you don't want to go home twice in a month. That shit is so expensive. Um, so I told my boyfriend this and that I usually did a friend's giving with some other people who lived too far away to go home. And we usually had a good time. Well, he let it slip that his mother uh, to his mother that I didn't go home and she was not having any of that. So I got a text from him one night that says my mom wants you to come over for, to our house for Thanksgiving. We had been dating for maybe a month at this point and I tried to talk my way out of it, but she wasn't having it. Moms, yeah. am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was my own parenthetical. But um, I'm not a huge fan of Thanksgiving anymore since I've been vegetarian since I was in high school. It's yeah. nice to see everyone, and let's be honest, the best part of that dinner is the side dishes, so I never feel bad <laughs> about taking as much as I want, but it's not my favorite holiday since I usually feel weird turning down dishes my family spent time making. Mm. His, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. totally. You yeah. don't want to feel like a trouble, you know? His family didn't know this since I try not to make a big deal out of my self-imposed dietary restrictions. So he mentioned something to his mom and she was willing to accommodate me and said that most of the sides would be meat free. Dude, this is the biggest <laughs> difference between like a Midwest or East Coast vegetarian vegan slash oh, yeah. West Coast vegetarian totally. vegan. Oh, yeah. oh. Where we don't want to put anyone out. Mm -hmm. for our own you know yep. dietary choices versus like a west coast vegan who's like you will motherfucker accommodate <laughs> you know yeah. what I, mean? I mean like luckily like the people who we're friends with who are vegans know first of all we just accommodate anyway because we're yeah, all yeah. midwesterners who yes. are living on the west coast and that's what we do but then also they'll bring their own shit to yeah eat as yeah, well yeah. like that's kind of the thing you have to do yeah in, in these scenarios um I gritted my teeth and agreed to go, thinking it would be a small family thing. <laughs> I take the hour-long ferry ride to his place. You got, you got on a motherfucking ferry. <laughs> Ooh, getting on a boat for strangers? Ugh. For a side of green beans? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know? I take the hour-long... Oh, and then 30-minute drive from the oh. ferry to his place. So, so you had to drive your car onto a ferry. Mm -hmm. And then oh, further man. drive. No. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done that before? No. It's so freaky. Yeah. Ugh. I, I don't, don't know. We did going to Martha's Vineyard once and no. it was, 
I don't know. It, it creeped me out. I've never lived in a place that had fairies like around. So it yeah. was not like a normal like thing for me to do. Like seriously, because there's that episode of um, Sex in the City where she dates the guy who lives somewhere where she has to like ferry to and from. I don't like that. Uh-uh. And I'm like, that seems I don't want to have to board a boat. I don't want to have to it's get work. on water to yeah, go listen, see you. I, I swipe left on people that live in Highland Park. Right. We've talked about this. Yeah. It's just, you're like nine miles is too far. It's if too I have far. to take an, an hour, an though, hour on a boat. No. Absolutely not. Um, so he says 30 minute drive from the ferry to his place, sweating nervously the entire time. I had never met a boyfriend's family and had them know I was the boyfriend. Big ups to living in the South. Okay, so he's Southern. That's why he won't uh, disclose his dietary restrictions. Yeah, that's right. Because, yeah. yeah, you're from the South where meat is king. Meat's king. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's a boyfriend-boyfriend situation. So I get his nervousness as well. Aww. We were just talking about on Boobies and Newbies about how when you have to come out, it's kind of like a consistent thing that you feel like you have to do over and over, over and over. And over. Yeah. Like every time you meet a new person's family and like things like that as well. So I, I get it. And I can't wait until like it doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's like not a thing. Yeah. yeah. We pull into his drive and there's a lot of cars there. Like, way more than I thought there would be. Oh, no. This is when he tells me it's not really a small gathering this year like it usually is. Okay, I should have uh-uh. known that beforehand. I just, hour and a half trip to get here. You couldn't send a text? Yeah. No, I don't like not knowing what to expect. No. I was being graced with the opportunity to meet his mother, her new boyfriend, his dad, and his new wife, his two older sisters and their significant others, his younger half-brother, who was three at the time, two aunts, and a grandparent (laughs) in one fell swoop. Okay, my stomach is full of air. (laughs) That is too many. Gut chills. You should meet the immediate family first in a more like a comfortable setting. And well after a month. Of wow. dating yes. too. I'm sorry. This is too much. You're meeting aunts and grandparents right now? Yeah. No, 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 no. You're like, mm, we've been on like four or five mm-hmm. dates. That's it. So yeah. mm. I wanted to leave and refuse to let him go more than five feet from me. That's what I do. I'm fucking tethered to you <laughs> if I'm in a situation leech. like this. Yeah. Um, you might as well get one of those like child leashes. Yep. Like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> it was awkward at first, but I gradually eased into things, but never fully relaxed. We started serving food and I look around at what they had. Everything. And I mean, everything had some form of meat in it, usually bacon. His mom realized what had happened. And since everyone was cooking uh, that day, it wasn't communicated that I don't eat meat. I played it off as no big deal. I can pick out the pieces and a couple of small pieces won't cause me too much trouble. I was wrong on that end. I had been five. It had been five years from this point. That I hadn't eaten meat and my poor stomach did not know what was going on. Oh, About no. halfway through a baked potato, which also pause. Uh, it's motherfucking Thanksgiving. I better be getting mashed potatoes. Thank you. Uh, there's only one way to do a Thanksgiving potato. And that's mashed. And it is mashed. Uh, uh, mm, hash brown casserole is pretty oh, good too. Also, but, sorry, sorry. But we also, I, I have hash brown casserole. With mashed potatoes. Yes, yeah, yes yeah. you are I want right. all the potatoes. A hash brown ma- a casserole. A casserole in general is fine. You on did it dairy free last year too, didn't you? No. Um, oh, wait. Who did something that you would normally do? I did, I did mashed potato. I did dairy free mashed potatoes. That's what it was. I did two different potatoes, ones with, with dairy and dairy free. And I did hash brown casserole. Hell yeah. Mm, that mm. hash brown casserole is so good that. Dude, it is oh. the dairiest. It is. There like, cr- there's like sour cream in that I bitch. Know. Sour cream, mm. butter. God, we're fucking hungry. A couple different types of cheeses. <laughs> uh, mm. Okay, he says, about halfway through a baked potato, I start to feel sick and had to excuse myself. I spent the rest of the afternoon running back and forth to the restroom because I couldn't keep anything in my system. Oh. I don't know if any of you have given up meat for a prolonged period and then went back if you don't do it right, you can wreck your system. And yep. unfortunately, nothing stays in for very long and comes shooting out the back door. Yep. yep. I was already anxious and that wasn't helping matters either. It was clear to every everyone what was happening and I couldn't bring myself to ask my partner to take me back to the ferry so I could die in the privacy of my dorm room. Also, <laughs> shitting in someone else's house. Oh, oh never come on. a pleasant experience. Come on. 
I ever, <laughs> ever. And if you are at a family function where there's probably only a couple of bathrooms anyway, yep. there's a shit ton of people there mm-hmm. and they know what's happening. They, they do. know. They do. You keep running back and forth. You don't know where the matches are because it's not your bathroom. Right. Like, you just know Aunt Linda's going to come in after you and just be like, know what, you blew what it went down. Up. Yeah. Yep. So I sat there starving on Thanksgiving because I couldn't keep anything in my stomach surrounded by strangers dying inside because they all knew what I was doing. This was easily the most holiday, the worst holiday of my life to date. We didn't last as he broke up with me before heading off to college, stating he didn't want to be in a relationship his freshman year so he could focus. Focus, focus on dick. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, (laughs) This obviously did great things for my self-esteem oh honey Aww. a fo- uh, fun follow-up i woke up to facebook a uh, facebook friend request from him a few years later he's engaged and planning a wedding to someone new someone he met his freshman year of college oh my god <laughs> <laughs> love you wow. ladies and everything you do hope you can make it up the coast to seattle one day would love to see you yeah. at a live show matthew oh that's so sweet i love that i love it too wild ass stories. So oh my funny. god it's just my nightmare like all right, i don't like being in uncomfortable situations with strangers i don't like having to bathroom problems in someone else's house i know Ugh. we just like it's opened, awkward for opened sure. the episode too with uh family stone or whatever it's just oh like yeah anytime mm-hmm. you're oh. like just like you're outnumbered family you're yeah, outnumbered. you're outnumbered <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Oh, and having to shit in that situation. (laughs) No, thank you. No, thank you. (laughs) All right. So this week, for some reason, I was all over the place trying to figure out what I wanted to do for my crazy in love. Sometimes it's hard. It is. It's funny because I think that I've had so much fun doing like historical. I know. And I almost texted you that you should have done like Pocahontas. (laughs) Oh, I mean, there's the, that's a really good one for Thanksgiving. I didn't even think about that. I, I yeah, I didn't dive in enough. I was like, is it crazy in love yeah. though? I I didn't think so, but yeah. I it's funny because I decided I wanted to go back to crazy in love. Yeah, mm-hmm. bring, bring out a classic. To, yeah, I want to bring back, and it is a classic. This is quintessential a crazy and love story nice um i'm gonna do the story of rebecca shaver yes yeah good one yeah and yeah, yeah. i i'd actually brought it up because there was a couple i was thinking and i'm like did we do this already and i knew that we didn't do this one we've talked about it we've talked about many times it, yeah right? and so keegan led me to the um case file yep, on it, which, which is a great yeah episode. he had a lot of good information mm-hmm. A lot of information from the case file episode. And then I also watched a 2020 called Your Biggest Fan, which was very difficult to get because it's YouTube and it's cut into like five different episodes. So it was like, dude, I haven't seen a 2020 in for a hot minute. Right. I, I watched them recently because they're on demand on my like spectrum. And I was like, oh, I want to watch something like, you know, true crimey. Yeah. But I will say I prefer a dateline. Same. Yeah. To a 2020. Yeah. 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 2020 is fine. It's, it's good. Just, yeah. I, I as well. 2020 or uh, uh, dateline. And then maybe 48 hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So at any rate. Okay. Here we go. So this is the story of Rebecca Schaefer. Um, <clears throat> also got some information from Wikipedia too. I just want to. Said all my sources. Word, word. That's kind of mm-hmm. where it was at. All right. 1967, Rebecca Schaefer is born in Eugene, Oregon. Um, and she is an adored only child. She grew up riding horses, loved her life, had a beautiful home life um, with her family. Um, she grew up as a devoutly Jewish and a devoutly Jewish family and was pretty into her religion and at one point even had aspirations of becoming a rabbi so she was very um it's just a cute all-american story yeah you know only child just very happy household um they ended up moving to the family moved to portland around 1980 um when she was 14 years old and at the time uh apparently her hairdresser had suggested meeting another one of his clients of their clients um who happened to be Nanette Troutman she was a modeling agent um you know noticing that she's got these gorgeous looks she's 14 years old she's young and fresh um, she's very classically like all beautiful. american print model like that's yep. what she looked like she looked like an 80s print model like yeah. absolutely 100%. yeah like curly Hands hair 
gorgeous yeah and and at the time that's really in in portland Mm -hmm. that's where she started she started doing like you know local ads for you know clothing and catalog work and things like that and you know it was making her some money and she was doing pretty well she's the kind of girl who would have been on the cover of like american girl oh my god and like i would have wanted to have like been friends with oh yeah 100 percent. i would have cut out her picture put it in scrapbook (laughs) <laughs> goals <clears throat> at 16 she decides to move to new york to pursue modeling full-time um even going on acting auditions when she gets there as well so she's like her parents are you know okay with this and they're like sure kick it into Supportive. the next year it was the dream, 80s, yeah. though it was yeah. the 80s when like you could convince your parents to do shit like that because it's like look at the runaways Right. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? In the late seventies, they were like thirteen. They're like, we want to be in a rock band. The parents are like, mm, okay, the bad decision fo- on their part. That guy. <laughs> but yeah, that but, was where you could like drop drop out of high school and pursue your creative dream. In the well, 80s. and it, that was she more- was like responsible. Yeah, yeah. and like I think, I think that they trusted the her. Yeah. yeah, you I, know, I think that's the big part too. Is that they really her her father is a child psychologist. So also too, I'm sure this was like. It wasn't like just sure on a whim. You're 16, go. There was, you know, the um, her modeling agent knew a woman out there who kind of took her under her wing. So it wasn't like it was by herself, but it was like she she had connections, she had some people in contact with, and then too she was she was a responsible girl, got good grades. You know, they would have no reason to think that she couldn't be mature enough to do this at, even at 16. Yeah, but to your point, yeah. um, Christina, nowadays I think. It would be very difficult for parents to to let go. Just the type of parenting <laughs> yeah. that exists mm-hmm. now is is it is different. Yeah. Well, I think beyond that point too, the the shame that you would get from other parents to They're like oh, you cups. did what <laughs> you let your what? kid drop out of high school and well, move across the country to be a model yeah. to pursue. Well, I mean. As far as I knew, she was still doing studies, right? Yeah, it was yeah, just like was. kind of like a, a tutor homeschool Yeah, situation. it was like a, a children's academy there that was like, I think, specifically geared toward people who were like models. And but still, the actors. mommy groups on Facebook oh, would roast today? the fuck out of you if you, you did that now. Don't even have an account. Yeah. Just, yeah. Don't. <laughs> just yeah. don't even sign on, don't. actually. like, Yeah, yeah exactly. Um <clears throat> She received um, a short-term spot on Guiding Light before securing a six-month recurring role on One Life to Live. So this really kind of started her her acting career because as she was doing these auditions, she'd, she'd been modeling, but the modeling stuff was was not as... She wasn't performing in New York as well as she was in Portland. Mm-hmm. In Portland, she was perfect for catalogs and things like that. And, and really, it was kind of, you know, she was getting to this point where it's like, you know, at 5'7", you know, she she's didn't not... really have a high fashion look. That's she, it. She had a, a adorable Catalog commercial look. kind of look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand that as somebody who did print modeling and is five four and would have loved to have been able to do like actual like fashion modeling. It's sometimes just just not yeah. in the cards for me or Rebecca Schaefer. I know. I always <laughs> I always say it's because I'm five four. It's the reason I That's didn't the, get to model. It's, it's the, the only reason. reason. <laughs> the only reason. I mean, if you've ever seen me, it's obviously because I'm five four. <laughs> it's also, I mean, if, if you stretch me out to a good five nine, I mean, a, I'd be way skinnier. <laughs> also, too, these thighs would be just I mean, real just stretched out, like pencils. Just you know, stretch Armstrong over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so in 1985, because of, you know, these lofty modeling goals were not quite, you know, working for her in like high fashion, she ended up moving to Japan, um, based on a recommendation because at the time they're, you know, uh, American, like, you know, that, that look. American look was exoticized over there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like trying to spit that out. That's exactly right. So at the time it was, there were a lot of American models going over to Asian markets because that was just a look that they really love. Um, <clears throat> so she did do that for a short time. And after a little bit of success, she returned to the United States. Um, in 1986, she secured a small role in the Woody Allen film radio days. And at 18, she landed her dream gig as Patty in the much anticipated return of pa- uh, Pam Dauber from Mark and Mindy, who was going to be the star role in My Sister Sam. Um, Rebecca packed up 
moved again across the country to Los Angeles. And so, I mean, imagine her parents are like, you've moved That's to New York. whirlwind two years. What an amazing, incredible, like, adventure. I mean, to live in New York, to live in Japan. Japan. And think about the kind of person who can do that at yeah. 16. Like that is, it is a special kind of person who can, I would it's have gifted, loved the idea of doing that. And I probably would have, if my parents let me go to New York, but I don't think I would have had that kind of success because yeah. like, you have to have this like drive and single mindedness, you know, like that's amazing. It's very and impressive. Intelligence and a s- very serious level of mm-hmm. intelligence. And I, poise. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was even just watching, uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I watched One Life to Live in General Hospital because my, my babysitter did, of course. So I therefore did as well. So it's funny to me because I'm like, I probably actually saw this originally at the time. It was like 1986, you know, oh, yeah, I'm probably. sure that I probably ended up seeing one of these episodes or something. And it's funny because I, they were showing clips from back then. And I was like, She's actually a really talented actress. And you can you can see that. It comes across. And even though it's soap opera, you can you can tell like she's got chops. There are some mm-hmm. people who also just have that like spark. Like we were talking about yes. San- mm-hmm. uh, Sandy Bullock. Like there are just some people who have like you can't put your finger on it, but when you watch them do factor, something, right? yeah, there's just uh, they shine. And right. she has that. When you watch her there's just something about her like she's glowing and radiant. Yeah. There's an attractiveness to her, right? Like there's a a draw. Yes. And you can't put your finger on it. It's like yeah. a, you wouldn't be able to articulate it, but like just it's a, a thing. Yeah. She seems exactly like what we were mentioning earlier where you're like, I just, I feel like I could be friends with her. Like yes. Sandy Bullock. Yeah, you're yeah. like, mm-hmm. I could be friends with that girl. Like yeah. she seems awesome. She seems really cool, which is great because she is gains success based off of that. And people do see her that way. She becomes wildly popular. The show is a huge success. I mean, it is in a time slot that's right between, um, it's like right between two huge shows. So they're, they're getting major, major coverage and it's a hit show, um, in her first year right off the bat. And on the 2020 episode, they, they described her too. One of the, um, people who knew her was like, she, she was, you know, their it girl, like anything that they wanted her to do, whether it be an interview, whether it be hosting Thanksgiving day parades, she was going to do to help promote the show. She was just, and she loved it. And she actually ended up moving when she moved to Los Angeles, staying with Pam, Pam Dauber. Um, and Pam talks about it on the 2020 episode too. It's just, it's the most darling thing. And she's like, I, I she was like, I felt like it was a really great idea because not only a was this darling sweet girl moving here had no place to go come live with me but also too she's like we could literally almost have that same relationship that we're going to be playing out right on role and yeah. you know in in this show in this kind of little sister way so it was really really sweet um and sorry oh and because of her newfound fame um she her fame grows right and she starts to get tons of fan mail she wanted from the very beginning to be you know more than ever just be there for her fans and reply and she's young and she knows she's got these young fans reaching out to her and she wants to respond to all the email uh, or all these mail like mail letters letters that are coming in (laughs) i'm like i don't know what we used to do back before email um (laughs) all these mail all these mails all these these mails all these letters are coming in (laughs) from fans and and who are supporting her so therefore she in a in return wants to support them back um eventually though the mail becomes so overwhelming that she ends up having to hire a company to kind of take over this for her and even on the vice of some people who are like you can't write things to people the one woman that was interviewed on 2020 was like you can't respond back to people because no matter what you say it's never going to be enough it always is going to be feel special people can take things you know like oh she she's my friend now and it becomes overly personal and you can never over personalize and that was you know so you know i was listening to one of my favorite like uh beauty uh vloggers Mm mm-hmm and she was talking about, I think they're called like para relationships and how actually weird that is. It's like the psychology, uh, as a psychology term. And I know that we experience this on a, a much, much smaller scale, but it right. is strange 
when people know your life and like they know mm-hmm. things about you and you don't know anything about them. And right. so you ha- you do, you develop one-sided. this one-sided relationship, you know, uh, and that, that can be strange and it's a delicate balance to strike because you do want to feel close to those people and you want to show them that you appreciate them and you want to, I, I understand where she's coming from completely. Yeah. Like you want to have a personal relationship with them, Absolutely. you know? So it's, I, I feel for her because I would have wanted the same thing, I think, yeah. you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. I can absolutely relate to this. Cause I'm like me as well. Back in the day, if that was my, if I was young, 18, I can just see myself being that same person who's like, I want to be different. I want to be a celebrity that people feel like they can relate to and talk to and reach out to. And it's what you would have wanted. Of course. You know? Yeah. yeah. But also too, I'm not going to go crazy and kill you. Yeah. I mean, and the other side of this too is so, okay. She hires this company and, 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 so what she ends up doing is just signing a bunch of like these like headshots and just with her name and on a few of them, it would be like a heart and on maybe one of them, it'd be like a peace sign. And she'd write like little notes, like just nondescript. And it would be just be like that yours is one of the best You're letters the best. I've ever received. Yeah. And like, and on these kind of just notations, like nothing that would speak specifically to what they were asking about. It's just mass produced. Yeah stuff right you reach reach a point where you really what other option do you have the amount of mail that she was getting and to be honest like i mean that was still appreciated the fuck out of that because speaking of american girl in the back of every american girl magazine i was subscribed to it they would feature like a female um like i think lois lowry the writer like there's like all these different people there would be like a biography and oftentimes at the end they would have like somewhere where you could write to them Uh and i wrote to like every one of them. Aww, I always did it. Baby and Keegan, you're so cute. <laughs> oh and God. it made me feel so like looking back now, of course I'm like, Oh, these are probably like mess, like letters they have made up already with like their signatures on them or whatever. But at the time when I got a letter back, it oh, was like yeah. so exciting I to mean, me, you know, I think I told you guys the only celebrity that I ever wrote to was Dave Thomas. Oh, the founder of Wendy. Oh thing ever, and I love that. I don't know how I forgot that, but that's <laughs> it's bless because I, your heart. I thought from watching the commercial that there was some kind of slogan contest, and I just I came up with a really good one, and I felt like I needed to write Dave Thomas. I love it, and he sent back a signed photograph of himself. I love that, <laughs> and a bunch of Wendy's coupons, and it was just the best. But I want to know thing how ever. many people are writing to Dave Thomas that he needs signed <laughs> photographs. On the ready to send to people. <laughs> the goddamn Columbus icon. Who okay? is who is writing him? <laughs> and what did his headshot look like? I mean, like, it looked it looked like an old man. It was a like black and white <laughs> photo of Dave fucking Thomas. <laughs> I want to see that. Please frame it and put it in a prominent place I in your house. I got to see if my mom held on to that because it was it that's, was great. We had frosties hilarious. for like a year. She sent so many yes. coupons. Frosties hey, are the and best. And guess whose frosty machines aren't broken down? Wendy's. Wendy's. Wendy's knows what's up. Wendy's knows what's up. Yeah. Uh, have you, you ever had fries and frosty? Have you ever had a fucking float made from frosty? Oh, no. Delicious. It's perfect like texture. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. So, Okay, moving on. We're clearly <laughs> starving. Oh my god, we are so hungry. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, in Arizona, uh, there's a man named Robert Bardo. Uh, he's watching television and sees an ad for an upcoming new show. He's watching like Remington Steel or something, he says. And he sees an ad for an upcoming show called My Sister Sam. This is the first time he ever sees Rebecca and becomes instantly enamored with her. He is, um, so a little bit about Richard Bardo. He's born the youngest of seven children and had a very troubled childhood, even becoming, you know, such a challenge in school that the school actually recommends to his parents that he see- seek therapy. And his parents are like, we're not putting him in therapy. It's the 80s. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're like, uh uh-uh. uh. No. Yeah. And he's the youngest of seven kids. So, like, we can't afford Yeah. With therapy. what? With what money? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so he was really a loner. He lacked friends and community and started to reaching out with fan letters. I mean, he didn't have a lot of friendships. He didn't have like people surrounding him. He didn't have, you know, 
And what were his six other siblings doing? Um, yeah, obviously they're like, mm, that, yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. That's <laughs> even even they were like, no, you're a little so weird. Sad. I don't want to hang out with it, you. It is sad. It is, it is sad. sad. I mean, because he doesn't have any friends. He doesn't have any community. He doesn't have people he can reach out to. And he's not seeking therapy, so he's not going to ever get better. You yeah, know? and it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard when you feel isolated, and it is easy to kind of create this like vast internal life for yourself Mm -hmm. you know which i think is kind of what he started to do you know absolutely and that's what exactly what he's doing he's he is recording every episode on his vhf of my sister sam he finds every interview she's ever done he finds every televised thing she's ever done and repeatedly watches these things which do you know how difficult it is to do without youtube Oh yeah, my. fucking in the eighties! Like, what is he doing? Is he going like microfishing yes. shit? <laughs> like, you have to. Uh, yeah, he's no. in the local library. Just, oh. he's uh, like, I know you guys have a version of this, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I, I, um, anyway, his lack of friends, all of that, leads him to writing a bunch of these fan letters. Um, he ultimately, um, you know, is reaching out, writing her all the time. He feels connected to her because just like we mentioned earlier, she does. She has this sense of like real, there's a real personable feeling about Mm -hmm. her. Like she feels like she could be your friend and Mm -hmm. he picks up on that. He's like, I can relate to her. We're the same age. You know, I see a kindred spirit in her and he latches onto it. He's like, I'm, I can feel the connection through the TV. You're speaking my language. Mm. So I I have to say that obsession is one of the scariest fucking things to me. Like the idea that somebody could become fixated on you is so, I think I've said it before on this podcast. It's like my, in my top fears. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Also, if you're listening, please don't, please. We are not as cool. Don't don't be your heroes. Trust me. Like, (laughs) listen, (laughs) nobody wants to become obsessed with me. I'm not interesting (laughs) enough for that. So boring. All right. Um, ba, ba, ba. He ultimately does receive a response from her. It's a headshot. And it has the phrase, yours is one of the nicest I've received with a peace sign in her signature. Mine? Mine is one of the nicest so you've he, ever received? He's like, he's this, done. He's like, this is her signal. She feels the same way. Mm. I've been writing her all these letters. She is sending me a signal. I have to go fuck watching all these show movies on TV. I got to go see this bitch in real life. It's time. So basically, again, it's an auto response, right? She's but right. These reciprocated feelings to him are real. And it's he, that erotomania that you talked yep. about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He flies to Los Angeles. He buys her a big bouquet of flowers and this huge teddy bear. And he shows up at the gates of Warner Brothers and he's like, hey, hey, knock, 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 guard. <laughs> and guard was like, like, red fucking flag. <laughs> he does that face that that TSA agent makes. Yes. And he's like, mm-mm. he is like, I'm friends with Rebecca. We are good friends. I'm in town. I came to stop by to see her. I brought her some gifts. She'll be expecting me. And guard's like, mm, will she though? I don't know. Mm-mm. Let me call over. We don't usually let people on on the lot when they're actually actively working. Mm -hmm. And so she calls over or the guard calls over and she's like, yeah, no, I am not expecting anyone. And no. So they turn him away. Well, he returns again the next day. Very determined. Nine, one fucking one. Okay. Like day two. Uh, uh, take your giant teddy bear and go somewhere else. Sir, we have told you this is not going to happen. And they even are like, you know, You know, it's very sweet, but you really need to understand that she's, this is not, not going to happen. Right. Well, and it's your place of fucking work. It'd be the same thing if someone showed up at an office building. It's like, this is where I fucking work. I don't like it. Don't show up. Don't show up anywhere. And I don't know you. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. So, but if you think about it, this is an easy way for him to find her because he knows that it's, she's going to be on this lot. Mm. She has to work. Right. But that's like such a red flag to the um, guards because yeah. it's just like, if you were her friend, you would, you wouldn't have another way of contacting exactly. her. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is weird. Also to think about the times. It's not like you have cell phones. It's not like you have, you know, this is the eighties. 
Yeah, but you should have her home phone number. She should know you're coming. Like, if you're friends, yeah. like, yeah. Yes. weird. So many, so many things. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Um, okay, so My Sister Sam goes into its second season and off of the, you know, it's hit top, you know, doing huge the season before. It actually is canceled in its second season. Um, it's actually was moved into a noon time slot directly against facts of life oh can't complete can't compete with tootie you just Mm -hmm. no you absolutely cannot and it's sad but she is ready to move forward becca uh rebecca actively is searching now though for roles outside of this patty image um she had auditioned for pretty woman and they had said you know what you're just too cute you're too girl next door you're too you're not you're quite too sweet edgy enough yeah. you're, you're too sweet nuts and yeah <laughs> she's too, she was a sugar nut <laughs> she's too much sugar nuts um <laughs> she is yeah she's they have already kind of put her in this idea of patty from this role and so her whole goal is to move away from this typecasting that's starting to happen because of being in that role and she lands a role playing um diane cannon in the movie or in the show end of innocence. Um, and she's landing a few TV movies, but her real break uh, from character comes when she gets a role um, in scenes from the class struggle in Beverly Hills. In this role, she has a sex scene and comes off a bit more promiscuous in Robert Bardot's eyes. So she's like now switching from this like girl next door, relatable, you know, anybody could be my friend girl to now kind of playing a role that, to him is like this isn't who you are why would you do this right yeah because again he has this like internal life where he feels like he knows her and he feels like who she was in that show is who she is is. is. yeah and it triggers an anger in him that ruins his perfect image of that he has made of her and so now instead of seeing this girl as this madonna he's she's now just a typical la hollywood whore he puts basically yeah yeah, no, that's how it happens. It's, oh, Ugh. God, it so, infuriates me. Around the same time, Bardo had read an article about in People magazine about Teresa Saldana's stalker case. Um, Teresa Saldana was another actress, and he learned from this article that he read that the that um, her stalker had found out her information by g- getting a private investigator. Sometimes too much information. Yeah, that yeah. the media's culpability in some of these things, if you want to really look, not just this case, but just sure. in the way that they're putting out the information to get a good, salacious story, it's like you're putting people's lives at risk. Yeah. It's very irresponsible. And again, this is the 80s, late 80s. <laughs> so you're looking at, uh, there's just no responsibility at the time. I, oh, just, yeah. I mean, you think about that time. I actually almost did the Jerry Springer up this, uh, where the guy, girl, guy killed the girl. I mean, think about Jenny Jones and the things that were happening at that time. Oh, yeah. Salacious was the name of the game. Oh, I mean, and it's still that way. I mean, look mm-hmm. at TMZ. Like, the way that we feel like we are entitled to mm. have access. And information. I mean, and that, all of that's not new. It's No, the, the it's penny, always been that penny way. Penny dreadful, mm-hmm, you true. know? Penny dreadfuls are always going to be a thing. Yeah, it's so true. So he decides he's going to hire a private investigator to find... Rebecca's address. He goes to a private investigator in Arizona in Tucson and uh, for $250 this investigator will find his address. Her Rather address. fucking 80s. It's just burn I, the 80s down. $250 you could just like... Burn it down and start over because <laughs> wow. wow. Well, I mean now, now you can Google somebody and find it for free. Well, not a celebrity. You couldn't just go and Google a celebrity's house address you can probably do it through you could go on the star tour right yeah <laughs> i mean to be honest okay never mind i'm not gonna give it yeah. i know now we're yeah. gonna do exactly what we just talked stalkers. about yeah oh my I... god <laughs> yeah well what the private investigator did was all he did was call contact the dmv and was able to obtain her information what who who working at the dmv is like this is fine yeah sure 
like, oh, you went, what? Wait, who was it? Rebecca, got it right here. The, the actress, Rebecca Schaefer, what do you need? Her home address? Perfect. No problem. God like, damn it, Carol. <laughs> Absolutely. Fucking loot. That was complete. Carol definitely did it. <laughs> um, also, if you want to know where his brothers and sisters are, well, one of his brothers helps him buy a gun because the gun shop would not give it to him because they said that he had a history of mental illness. And also he was only, I think, 19 at the time. Oh, good on that yeah. gun shop, though, for actually. That's, that but seems bro- rather responsible. But they go back the next day and so his brother buys it for him. Oh, God. Yeah. So it's fine. It's, it's fine. He just needs a gun. Wow. I know. Keegan's going to burn this place down. Flames? On the side of my face. <laughs> Hating. <laughs> um, so he does as well, writes another letter to, um, and he, this kind of a letter to himself, like th- that they talk about kind of like a diary type situation in this letter. He writes, I need to destroy that, which I cannot obtain. He, he's basically like, I've, I've, obsessed over this thing this fucking incel it, go so I, fuck yourself I like honestly what a piece of shit like oh my god the entitlement that of- yeah exactly <sighs> so he takes a greyhound bus from uh to to la from tucson and in july 18th 1989 bardo found rebecca's apartment knocked and showed her his signed letter and after a brief conversation she asked him to leave and not return he went to a nearby diner for breakfast and returned an hour later. Can we talk about how fucking terrifying that would be? Like to open yeah. your door, your front door yeah. where like you're supposed all, to be that safe. Was, that was the eighties. So yeah. people still like came to your door or mm-hmm. whatever. Cause I'm like, if anyone, even if, if you guys like knocked on my door, like unannounced or whatever, it would be like the weirdest oh, fucking uh, thing. I now. was at home yeah. the other day and there was a knock at my door and I almost jumped like 50 feet mm-hmm. and it was somebody who was leaving a package, but I was just like, Oh, like, yeah, we no. are not equipped for that. No, <laughs> no. But the reason Rebecca answered her door was because she had been expecting somebody to come to her door. She'd been expecting a script for Godfather three in which she was going to be getting a role in, um, to arrive. So she opens up again as he returns an hour later, again, expecting a script. And again, it's Bardot who pulled out his three fifty seven handgun and shoots her point blank in the chest. Rebecca died 30 minutes after her arrival at Cedar Sinai. Can you fucking imagine? Yeah. And, and that's the thing is that she was, she was not, I remember from the case file episode that she was like polite with him mm-hmm. when he polite first came firm. polite, but firm. And so the second time that he came, she wasn't having any of it. Yeah. So she like, gave him fucking attitude, which she was well within her fucking right to. Right. But know? that's not but who that was it was not. at odds with who he thought she was. So mm-hmm. I'm sure that that enraged him as well. Yeah. You know, like, because this is not the, the, girl that I love for my sister Sam wouldn't give me that kind of attitude. But you put you know? a peace sign on your signed I thought we had an understanding. Like, unbelievable. I, we, I know. It's wild, so isn't it? So wild. To think about that's how, how someone thinks. Yeah. How yeah, clearly. Thinks. Yeah, there was something not firing. Bardo was arrested in Tucson the following day after police were called to to a reports of a man wandering down the I-10. Um, Marsha Clark was actually the lead prosecutor and Bardo was convicted of, and sentenced to a life in prison. I'm not going to give him much more talk time, but as a result of this case, new, a new California laws changed and, pre, uh, changed basically preventing the DMV from releasing private information and was in, um, enacted in 1994. Why was that wow, not a 94. fucking thing already? That doesn't make any sense, but, uh, uh Okay. Well, whatever. (laughs) Also in 1990, her death also uh, prompted America's first anti-stalking laws. Oh. In 19-fucking-90. Like, everything about, like, obsession and stalking, it frustrates me so much because you... It's so out of control. Even now, and even nowadays, it's like they can't really do anything until... Something happens. Right. Like, honestly, even if she had called the police after the first time he came to her door, I guarantee you, I know how that conversation would go. They would say, well, what did he do? Mm -hmm. Well, he came to my front door and he showed, he gave me the creeps. He showed me a picture and he tried to tell me that we had a relationship and we don't. And I'm just nervous about it. I guarantee you they'd be like, well, I mean, it's, that's not against the law. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, 
it's so frustrating and it's so sad. It is yeah. sad. And it's, it is a really sad story when you look at somebody as bright and, you know, full of life and, you know, on the verge of a real burgeoning career. And, you know, it's always sad with, when anybody dies. I don't want to discredit, you know, anyone's death or that hers is more sad because she was famous. It's not. It's just that, you know, we were let in. That's, that's why we're yeah. able to experience that. It's not yeah. any more sad than anything else, but yeah. we, because of the nature of celebrity, you know, we were able to see well, there's documentation yeah. of, mm-hmm. of her brightness of her star, you know, like there's documentation of it. Yeah. And so it just, it brings it home in a different way because we were able to see it and we know about her child and we know she's an only child and like all of that stuff just makes it's layers of devastation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. You know? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Whew. Good, one. good one. Very good one. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so let's let's do a nice little palate cleanser. Yeah. Some sorbet. <laughs> a sorbet of shows we've been watching. Or... Oh, have I told you about this uh, show called Marriage Story? Let me talk about it for 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> totally kidding. Oh, my gosh. Call the midwife. You're here. Dude. Welcome. So, We're over here with open arms yes. for you. So, okay. <laughs> about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, was the uh, long week. We we have the digital Hollywood thing. It was also the anniversary of the separation and that sort of thing. And it also daylight savings gets it's dark like, oh. at four thirty, and I went down, down hard. It was like so, like somebody like hit me at the knees, and I went like down. Now I was bound and fucking determined to not have the year that I had last year because I went down at the same time last year and I didn't get back the fuck up until after New Year's. It took me a long time and it was really hard. It was not a good couple of months. And I was like, I'm not going to do that this year. So I have hibernated a little bit, but I put on, I was like, you know what? I need something that feels good. It's That is about love, that has hope, that has just good people in it. If I'm going to to be down, I'm not going to watch murder stuff. Right. I can't. I have got to have a uh, pause. And so I put that on. Holy shit, dude! It is a warm hug. Oh. It, that show. That it show loves physically, you back. Yes, it does. That, that show it does. physically does something yep. that makes you feel like physically warm. Like, and I did. It unlocked where I was like, oh, okay, it's okay to cry. And so yep. I cried out. I cried for like a week, dude. It's literally a crying show for Christ's sake just a week of crying and then but and then I just started to feel lighter I started to feel better and I was just like you know what like it's if, cathartic if, honestly it if is this year I had one or two weeks of feeling down and last year was two months like I'm gonna count that as a W Absolutely. I'm gonna count that as a win yeah that's a hard capital yeah. W well, right there especially because the real win here is that you were able to recognize what was happening right you're able to acknowledge what was happening and find a way out yeah like that's that's huge because when you're in a depression spiral like it is that's what makes it so hard is that you literally can't see the light at the end of the tunnel right so Mm -hmm. if you are able to recognize your behavior and Mm -hmm. understand how to move forward Mm. it's a huge win i just gave myself like permission to feel it yeah i think like last year i tried to fight it and had this like i should be i should be yeah. farther along i should be blah 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 and i didn't play the shoulda game this year and i was just like i'm sad and that's okay you I'm know and i mean i'm allowed feelings. to feel those feelings and i've fucking felt them but and then watching like call the midwife and then and yeah like you said seeing the light at the end of the tunnel you know i was just like i felt a lot stronger than last year and like you know i'm giving that Trying to get those chummy vibes. Oh God, She's bless the America! Best. I, I fucking love her and I, so much. And Sister Evangeline, oh. also my favorite. <laughs> They're oh. all great. They're all great. They're all great. And I can only tell you that the show only gets like it's better, it's better. always great. It's oh, never good. not great. Yeah. And like it's you can't that show can trick you if you are in a dark place and you're like I need to cry because I'm sad. 
then you'll start crying because your joy. your heart is warmed and yes. then your body's confused because you're like, I'm doing what I wanted to do because I was sad. <laughs> yeah. But I'm also feeling warm but and I feel joy feelings right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It, I it's, thought it was dead and a baby lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was not sure. My mom was the one who told me to watch Call the Midwife. And, you know, as a defiant daughter, I guess, I wouldn't classify myself that way, but I <gasps> didn't watch it like for months like right. after she told me i was like yeah 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 and then one day i did and i was like this is why you listen to your mom because <laughs> yes. mom's no best it, it, like so if you're like mm, that show's not for me you should go turn it on because you go oh. listen to tammy cortez mm. right yes now. Well, the, the very last episode that i watched and i ended up tweeting this quote out it just really hit me it's um it was from the woman that says it to Jenny Lee is is the woman that survived the concentration camps and Jenny Lee is going through her own like disaster at the moment and she just says you keep living until you feel alive. Yep. And I was like, "Oh my god, that is the most profound fucking I'm shit." Cry right now. I know. I'm <laughs> tearing up <laughs> right now. I know exactly what episode you're talking about. You keep- you, I think you we both are like at the same spot. Exactly. The yeah. Oh. It, it broke my heart. Cause I'm like, that's exactly what you do. And that is like what I'm feeling right now. Getting through the holidays. It's like, you just, you just keep living until you feel alive. Mm. And yeah. it's so, uh, I love beautiful. that show. So beautiful, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad you're on board. Yes. yes. Yeah. Feeling it. I guess I know what I'm going to be doing this week is oh. watching more midwife. Honestly, me too. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Um, so I, I did watch the great British Bake Off <gasps> holiday specials. There's two I episodes. There's two. And oh my God. So you watch the first one, the yeah. Christmas one, which is a Christmas and a New Year's one. And I have to say flow with yes. those dentures. God bless it. Teeth. And she, <laughs> she emptied an entire bottle of wine into a cake, <laughs> a whole bottle. I was like, bitch, and we friends. Cheese on queen. It. <laughs> cheese on it. She's like an old lady. I was like, oh. I fucking am standing. Slow. <laughs> Amazing. So, God damn cheese. And he comes over and tastes it. He's like, that is not oh, good. That's, uh, <laughs> And poor Flo was like, I know that cake is good. I love that cake. I'm going to keep making that cake. And yep. I'm like, we stand a queen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, here's for British shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling it. Yeah. Oh, I also watched that. Um, and I'm still, I'm, we're now on season five of Castle. Castle, uh, we've spent way too much money watching the show, but uh, it is. <laughs> Real fucking good. Dude, Nathan Fillion is God, just yeah, love him. so fucking charismatic. Yes. Talk about someone who has like a, a, an it factor. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's got him. this charm about him that is yeah. undefinable. The number of, because I am a hard, hardcore Firefly. I yeah. watched Firefly since the very first episode when it came out on actually on television. Watch that shit. It was the angry person who, when it went away, I was the person who donated money when they wanted to make a movie. I did all that. I, I'm, You're writing angry letters. I, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Dearest producers. <laughs> Dearest ABC Fox whoever. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, so anyway, um, I love that show. I think it's real super good. So that's, I'm still, we're still on that. Um, the number of the Firefly references that they make. It's pretty cute. In Castle. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I love the the number of people who were from that show who guest starred on it. Yep. It's 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 yeah. It's it's brilliant. How I have not watched that show until now is is really stupid. Um and then also too, reading. We've been we've been reading. We just read um Stocking Stuffers. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it was by it, Aaron McClellan. It will stuff your stocking it's something it's, it's something uh, so yeah, if you so, want to hear our review about it you definitely uh want to check out boobies and newbies it is a christmas themed erotic <laughs> novella and it is uh wow it is <laughs> wowie wow yes, wow go wow. listen to uh, <laughs> it, it should be coming out soon i think at the beginning of december check that out for sure we'll make sure to put it on our socials and everything else too it, it does have sugar nuts in it it does oh it sure does <laughs> yeah and also meaty ones meaty nuts There's as well <laughs> also meaty ones there um so much it's nutty that's for sure i do want to point out before we end that 
we have a new design in our merch shop. So go check that out. Um, and we will be having a, hopefully doing something for Black Friday. We got to get that worked out with the store. But if that does end up going through, we will be putting it on all of our socials. So uh, keep a lookout for all that stuff. Oh, well, I'm so excited about the new design. I am yeah. too. The I want it for <laughs> Christmas. Cool. So yeah, if you want more details on our merch, more details on... Uh, linking up with our Patreon on Facebook, anything like that, go to our one-stop shop of website. That is mywarstatepodcast.com. Uh, we appreciate you listening to us through this holiday season. We've got um, more holiday date stories that we're looking for, so keep writing them in yeah. for please, sure. Please. We love them. And we love you guys so much. So thanks so much for listening. Cheers! Cheers.